this hair. I look like Carrot Top on a good hair day. <laughs> okay. Hi there, my name is Wendy with loveandstampin.com. Welcome, so excited you're here with me today. Today we have yet another color splash. A color splash is simply when I take a combination of colors, I make a few cards for you so that you can see how to maybe use those colors. Maybe it'll spur some inspiration in you to use the same colors or a variation of them. I love it when people share their creations on social media and tag me. Um, you can tag me on Instagram at Wendy Cranford um, and use hashtag color splash and that will help me find your creation and then I like to share it to my Instagram. So if you create a color splash and you use my colors and you want me to share it on my Instagram, make sure you give me a shout out so that I know that you've done that. Um, today we are going to use all the berry stuff. So there's some really fun, beautiful products in the January through June mini catalog with Stampin' Up called Berry, Strawberry Sweet, I think. Um, sweet Strawberry, Sweet Strawberry. And then there is an add, uh, uh not an add-on, a freebie called Berry Blessings. And this is free along with... Do, 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 do. This designer series paper, these come free together. There's a 12 by 12, full 12 by 12 pack of this. So these come free together when you place a $100 order or more with Stampin' Up. You can choose these as a free additional item. So anyway, we're gonna get into this. We're gonna create some really beautiful stuff and I hope you love what I have created today. One of the cards is a pretty elaborate card where I'm gonna show you some masking techniques and then the other two are more simple. So we've got a fun fold, a coloring card, and a super basic simple card. So kind of all over the board. All right, let's get into it. All right, so our color combo is Poppy Parade, Daffodil Delight, Granny Apple Green, and Pacific Point. Although I do kind of cheat and use some balmy blue and I'll show you that when we get to it. So to start out, I just wanna show you this trick. Um, this paper is phenomenal. So I will talk about more about this paper later, but basically this paper you cannot purchase. You can only get it free with a $100 order. It comes with a paper and a stamp set for free. So that's only valid until February 28th. So if you're watching this video after that date, then this is no longer available. So we're gonna use the Sweet Strawberry Stamp Set, or the bundle, I should say, because we're using the punch here. And then we're also using the Berry Blessing Stamp Set today. So we're making three cards. One is fairly simple, one is like intermediate, and then one is advanced. I would consider it advanced because of the coloring. So as you can see, this punch punches out leaves and a little topper, a strawberry, and a flower. So this is a builder punch and it punches out lots of different pieces. So now I'm gonna punch out the strawberry piece and as you can see, I've already punched several of those so that I have them sitting there ready to make a card. The cool thing about stamping in black ink on top of designer series paper is that all the coloring is done for you. So here's some more of that paper. I just wanted to show it to you. It is beautiful. So. Um, lots of bright colors, great for summer, great for spring, and I just really needed to make happy cards. <laughs> All of my cards really are happy, but I needed like bright, cheery, happy colors. All right, we're going to start with this card. The card base, which is just a flat base, is cut at five and a half by four and a quarter. The designer series paper that is layered on top of it is cut at four by five and a quarter. And then we have this piece, which is cut at seven, no, that's wrong, nine by three. So the, the little piece that I just layered on, I think I misspoke. It is cut at three and a quarter by four and three quarters. So I don't know what I said two seconds ago. Um, anyway, so then this piece layers down on top. So you kind of have this flat base surface with this little note card on top, 
really, really cute. Then we're going to use some of the designer series paper, which is cut at two and three quarters by four and a quarter. And I'm going to layer it on to the little note card in the middle. And then we're going to build up all of our little elements. So I really struggled figuring out how I wanted to do the sentiment on this. Um, at first I was going to try to die cut it out of something and then it just wouldn't quite fit. So I ended up stamping it on a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock and then trimming it down on both sides. And you'll see that here in a minute. And then I'm just going to be adding all the other elements to the card and I have filmed that for you so you can see how I finish putting it together. So I thought we would do some story time and jump back and forth in between these cards and um, some stories I have for you. And so if there's something that I need you to know that I'm doing with the card, I'll let you know. Otherwise, I'll just kind of continue on my little stories. So making this card really brought to, to mind, um, brought back memories of my childhood. When I was a kid, there were blackberry um, patches out off the highway. So we live rural and I still live in the same town I grew up in. Um, I did go out and venture out, but I ultimately moved back here because I knew it was where I wanted to have a family and everything. So we live in a really small rural community and off of the side of the highway down the road from us is a huge blackberry thicket. And when I was a kid, my grandpa, one of the things he would do to get us out of my grandma's hair for a while, and sometimes she would go with us too, but I think now looking back, I think this was like a kindness on his part to take a bunch of us grandkids and go blackberry picking. So let me back up a little bit. Um, me, my sister, my cousin Shannon, who lives in Montana, who I talk about regularly, and some of my other cousins, um, ha spent a ton of time with my grandparents when we were kids. More so me and my sister and my cousin Shannon. Um, we lived actually on the property that they owned off and on. Well, my cousin Shannon lived there for her whole life. We lived there off and on throughout our entire childhood. And so in the summer months, my grandparents had five grandchildren that they watched every single day. Um, and we were young. I mean, we were kids. We were little. And so my grandma would put us in swim lessons and take us to swim lessons, um, mostly because she was afraid of the water and she didn't want any of us to be afraid of the water and not know how to swim. So it was really important to her that we all had swim lessons and they were in town local to us. So she made sure we went to swim lessons every single year and I will forever be grateful for her to her for that because um, it was a priority to her. And so she made sure we got to go. So anyway, um, on the days that we weren't swimming or fishing or whatever, we would sometimes go blackberry picking and my grandpa would get a big five gallon bucket or two or three sometimes. And he had gloves and we would go walk out into these uh, blackberry thickets off the side of the highway. And I just think it's funny because nowadays I don't even know if we could get away with that. Like I'm sure somebody would stop and be like, what are you doing down there? But back then, um, it was not a big deal at all. And nobody ever said anything. It was just public property, I would assume. Um, cause there was no fencing around it or anything. Okay. This finishes this card. I think it turned out really, really cute. I actually, I, I'm lying. I am going to add these embellishments and I did stamp on the inside of this card as well. So you'll have to hang tight for that. Okay. So anyway, so we would go down into these blackberry bushes and we would pick blackberries for hours, like seriously hours. We would fill five gallon buckets and I can always, I can remember him always saying like, 
let me go down there first. There could be snakes. And he would, you know, take the bucket when it was empty and like rattle it around in the bushes wherever we were going to be because we do have rattlesnakes where we live. So that is a very real concern. You do actually have to really look out for rattlesnakes where we live. So he would rattle the bucket around and make a bunch of noise so that if there was a snake, it would make itself known um, and or go on its way, one or the other. So I don't ever remember running across the snake while we were blackberry picking, but I definitely remember that because it always made me nervous. And I can remember thinking, what if one crawls out of the bushes at us and we're stuck in all these blackberry bushes? <laughs> bushes and there's nowhere to go like because we would get down in there pretty thick and there was only one way out and one way in it, like you would go in through this little trail because I think other people went there and picked blackberries as well it wasn't just us and then you would come out in the same place and we loved it we loved picking them and we would get cuts and scratches on our arms and our hands that was a really fond childhood memory for me and um, we also the strawberries make me think of this. We also always had fresh strawberries and um, my grandma in the summer would cut up and make um, like, like a tray full of fruit, like watermelon, strawberries, blackberries, whatever. And we would eat on that in the summertime outside because we always got locked out of the house. Okay, we're moving to the next card. So this is the one that is more intense. It's just a bunch of coloring. And this is where I use the balmy blue because we don't have Pacific Point um, markers. So I use balmy blue. So on this sheet, this is a piece of masking sheet, uh, sheet and I got it from Simon Says Stamp and it just comes in sheets. And I stamped all the images on it that I thought I might need to mask. So I thought I would show you a little bit of this process um, I don't show, I, I don't film all of it just so you know, but I just wanted to show you a little bit of it so you could get an idea of how this works, particularly the first couple. The biggest thing with masking, the most important piece of masking is actually making sure that whatever you want in the front gets stamped first. So for example, I want these strawberries to have a little whatever that thing is called that goes on top of a strawberry, the leaf, the stem, the thing. It's got leaves and stems. So um, that's this piece. And I want that to look as though it's sitting on top of the strawberry. Well, if I would have stamped the strawberry first on my cardstock and then stamped this over it, I would have the line of the strawberry going through the middle of this leaf. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down and I will actually stamp the leaves first on my card base and then I will mask it and stamp the strawberry second and then it will move the strawberry into the, the background and it will leave this leaf piece in the foreground. So basically as I build this scene that is all I do is I continue to mask and move things about so that it, you end up seeing um the well you'll see the finished scene has all the pieces it needs so you just peel this like backing paper off and then you've got this mask that will cover up wherever you stamp the same image so you can use post-it notes for this. You can use regular copy paper and cover it with Tombow glue and let it dry. And then it will become masking paper. So anytime you use Tombow glue on anything, if you stamp it and then you let it dry, it, uh, or I mean, if you ink it, ink it, good grief. If you add the glue and then you let the glue dry, it creates a tacky, um, paper or tacky items. So that's why way back in the day, some of you might remember we had stamps that didn't always adhere to the clear blocks very well. So what I would do is I would take Tombow glue and rub it across the top of the stamp and let it dry and then it was tacky. We don't have that problem anymore with the newer stamps. But if you have old ones and you have that problem, there's your fix. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna take the strawberry and stamp it right over the top where I have masked those leaves. And then I'm going to peel this up and voila, see that? So then I'll mask this one. But now I also need to mask the strawberry next to it because I want this strawberry that I'm about to stamp to fall into the background. I want it to be behind this strawberry. So again, when you're planning out this type of card or this type of technique, you have to, you do have to plan it out. You have to think about what what do you want in the front and what do you want to fall to the back? And then you have to stamp whatever you want in the front first. And then the other items will begin to fall into the back. So here I'm just deciding like how I want to stamp this, what I want to do with it. And I ended up deciding, well, since I already have this strawberry masked, I would go ahead and stamp this leaf thing. This is what really reminded me of blackberries. You know how blackberries have the like trio leaves or whatever, and they're kind of like jaggedy looking. I don't know. This reminded me of blackberry bush, but it, it is strawberry, but it, it just kind of made me think of blackberries. Anyways, I digress. Okay, so I'm stamping this, and then right now you can see as I go, it looks like a hot mess. It's like, what is, this does not even look right. But as you continue to mask and build up the scene, it just continues to look better and better. And so basically, that's what I did, is I just continued on building the scene. Okay, so I've got blueberries here, and um, I'm figuring out how I want those, and yeah. That's that. Okay, so back to my story time. So we would pick the blackberries, bring them home, and then my grandma would make blackberry cobbler. And I am telling you, I've never had blackberry cobbler as good as hers again in my life. Like hers was the best. Um, I think maybe because there was so much love put into all the whole process, like us picking the blackberries and her making all of it. I can remember her hands and how they looked and her making the dough from scratch in the kitchen uh, to go into the blackberry cobbler. It was so delicious. And then of course she would always have ice cream with that vanilla ice cream. So you would have vanilla ice cream, that would melt over the top of this fresh blackberry cobbler and it was divine people I'm telling you divine I miss it a lot I miss a lot of her cooking she also made the best chicken and dumplings of anybody I've ever met and that is one of my favorite comfort foods and I've never my mom makes pretty good chicken and dumplings too but I don't know there's just something about you know, your grandma and a grandparent or a grandma making the way they make something. It's like, I think it's more nostalgic than anything. The way you remember it in your head, it's like nobody else could ever make it as good. Anyway, so she would always make blackberry cobbler and then we would always have blackberries that she would just wash and we would, like, like I said, she would put out on a platter or whatever and we would eat on those. So this year I was thinking, I wonder if I could find a blackberry patch somewhere to take my daughter and we could go blackberry picking. I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, I'm not sure if she will have the same nostalgia fill as I did or do with it because it was something we did with my grandparents and we did it every year. So, you know, <clears throat> you know it was like one of those built up things. Anyway, so that's my story for the day um, as far as, you know, the old times and what we used to do. Did any of you ever go like berry picking of any kind or I know everybody, depending on where you live in the world, there's different things like that that you do, right? So um, yeah, so if you have something fun that you did when you were a kid, I would love to know that it was like like that, like picking something or a harvest of some sort. Um, I know my cousin that lives in Montana, her husband has lots of memories about harvesting different things because 
they live in Montana and there's lots of, you know, farmland and stuff there. So anyway, that's the story that I could think of today to share with you. And we are almost getting to the point that we're going to color this image. And I, I kept this in real time. I thought about speeding this video up, um, particularly this area, because I thought these people do not want to watch me sit and mask this. But what happened was I thought, you know what? No, I'm going to keep it in real time because I wanted you to see how long it really takes to mask and like create a, a scene or an image that you know you're putting together on your own basically. So I just kind of continued to mask, cut out the masks that I needed. I stamped all the images ahead of time because I I didn't want to be in the position to where I then would have to stop, stamp the images on masking paper. I really didn't honestly know how many masking masks I was going to need when I started this, but I went ahead and stamped everything thinking, well, who knows what I'm gonna use. And so now I'm just kind of cutting out the pieces as I go that I'm gonna use. I knew for sure I didn't wanna to have to cut out that crazy spriggy piece over there on the right side. <laughs> I knew that was going to be, that would have been a lot to mask. So I wanted to make sure it fell into the background. But on the left side of this, after I stamped the blueberry leaves, I really was left feeling bleh about the rest of the image. Like it looked uneven to me. And then it bothered me also that I centered it right in the middle of the cardstock. So what you're not going to see is that I cut, I ended up cutting this whole piece down into a smaller panel and I ended up making a four by four and a quarter card because I just couldn't figure out a way to make this work the way I wanted. So there's this thing called the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds basically means our eye, things look more visually stimulating to us when it is like, in a, think of a tic-tac-toe, okay? Think of a tic-tac-toe. Anywhere where the tic-tac-toe meets is, is like where you would want to place something. So if you were to lay a tic-tac-toe over the top of this card base, then I did the cardinal sin and I placed my imagery dead in the center. Instead, it would have been better to put this up top or down low or off to the side and not filled all the way across the card. So then the only way for me to fix that was to cut off both sides and to have this whole image look more centered. And then here I added more blueberries because again I felt like it was very off kilter and it bothered me. So I added more blueberries and that felt like it kind of evened things out a little bit and um, made it a little bit better. And then what you didn't see on camera is I ended up still stamping more. I masked more and stamped more of the sprigs. So here is my coloring sped up like times a billion. I did a time lapse video actually. And there's the finished card. So this is the first card you're seeing that you didn't see me make. The thank you card with the with the daffodils, uh, with the daffodil, with the daffodil delight card base. I'll show you in a second. Okay, so this is my finished one here and you can see the difference. Then this one I didn't make for you because it's so super simple and self-explanatory. And then we have the fun fold. So three really cute, fun cards using the color combo. And I did kind of cheat and use that mommy blue, but overall super easy, super cute. Thank you.